well, you've done all your planning. You, you know what, where you can build a dam, you know how big a dam you want, uh, you know you're sitting within legislation, uh, you're right to go. There's three probably different types of dams or construction you look at. So you've got a one waller or a single wall, two wall or a three wall we're looking at here today. Your landscape will determine what type of dam you need and your, your operator or your designer will understand exactly what is needed for that situation. Everything you do when you're constructing a dam is about longevity. Good planning when you're pegging a dam is, is very vital and to consider where your outlet's going to be and where your trickle pipe's going to spill. The outlet is where the water leaves your dam. So that outlet needs to match the amount of water that's coming in your dam. So when you've got a storm, the water needs to be able to exit the dam as much as it's coming into the dam. So they need to match each other. You want to see a good outlet, you want to make sure that outlet is uh, outletting free of the dam, it's not running beside a dam bank and causing damage to your dam, it's not causing erosion. So you need your spill area to go into nice grass flat area. Other considerations are, do you need a trickle pipe? Is it a trickle flow? To have that trickle pipe in your dam will keep your outlet dry and, and it'll keep your paddock dry where that water's leaving your dam. So that trickle pipe will exit that small flow straight behind your dam into the existing area of where it would have naturally went. A bad outlet, you'll see your dam outlet will start to erode, you'll start to get channelising of your outlet and your, your dam is basically starting to break down or deteriorating, so a good outlet is vital. A key point when you're building a dam is you want to make sure that all your water is covering your excavation. So whenever you're excavating material to build your dam, water's got to cover that. If that's exposed and water can run over it when it's filling, that's a potential point to start erosion. You want to make sure you, you've got good clay coming up over your banks. Uh, you want to make sure they put a key in. So when you strip all your topsoil off, you take that to the back of your dam and then you build your dam out of good clay. You want to make sure where the clay is touching the ground, they've put a, what they call a key line in. So it, it's actually clay laying on clay. And when you're finished, you bring that topsoil back up over your dam and so your dam can be grassed up in the future. If you've got a really good operator, they'll understand that you need good compaction of your soil. So when they're building it, they need to be compacting that clay material as they build it. That's a determination of whether a dam can fail, whether it'll leak, so in this example, we've got a, a really good, well-constructed dam. This dam's probably 10 to 12 years old, and you can see it's still in really good nick. You've got a good batter on the back and a good batter on the front. You want to be seeing a three to one on the front and minimum two and a half to three to one on the back side of the dam. You'll have a crest, so the width of the top of the bank, you want to be looking at a good three metres. So you're after a big, fat bank. The other consideration is what we call freeboard. So that's the amount of material above top watermark to the top of the bank. You're looking at a minimum of a metre freeboard. And if you've got all them aspects, you're going to have a well-constructed dam. As you can see, if you can get your dam construction right, you'll have a good, reliable dam into the future.